everyone, welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about some of our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, it is going to be a prickly friend of ours, because we are covering the oh-so-wonderful porcupine. This, of course, is a very special listener episode dedicated to Linda, Hannah, Kieran, and Flaky. Thank you for taking the time to write in, and I hope you enjoy the show. To request an animal for a future episode, you can do so by going to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and clicking on the Animal Request tab. If you love Relax With Animal Facts and would like more of it in the form of four extra episodes every month, you can go to patreon.com slash relaxwithanimalfacts. You can get double the episodes and you can also vote on future episodes. Today, it was those of you on Patreon that voted for the porcupine. You can join for just three cents a day. It's obligation free. You can cancel any time and there's even a free trial. We are going to be running a giveaway on the Patreon for a brand new t-shirt, and so if you've been thinking about signing up, this is the time. A huge shout out to George Flad who has provided the ambiances for this episode. His work is linked in the description and I encourage you to go check him out. And now let us begin to wind down a little bit. If you are new, I welcome you with open arms to the Animal Podcast family, and if you are returning, you know exactly what I am going to be asking of you. I have three primary exhortations for you. The first is that you put on a pair of hiking or running shoes. We are certainly going to be needing those for where we are going today. And my second encouragement is that you realize perhaps where you are carrying some tension. For you, it might be in the legs, the neck, the shoulders. It's maybe even possible that you don't even know you are carrying tension in the first place. Sometimes it can help to mentally scan from your feet all the way up to your head and trying to relax whatever it is that you are tensing. Regardless of what is tense for you, my exhortation to you is the same. Do your best to relax those parts of your body. You can even bring up in your mind some jello and do your best to impersonate it. It can be very difficult to relax when we are stiff as a board. And the last thing I encourage you to do is to give your mind permission to wander and journey with me into a Canadian forest where the porcupine resides. always happy to travel to the forests in Canada, and what better occasion to travel to a Canadian forest than to see the porcupine. There are several species of this creature. They are rodents that are characterized by being large, herbivorous, quill-bearing creatures. They are characterized by their large size, their herbivorous diet, and of course those characteristic quills that they have. The specific species that we are going to be running in today is the Canadian porcupine, also known as the North American porcupine. The scientific name of this porcupine is Erethizon dorsatum. Maybe one part of that scientific name is already familiar to you, dorsatum. We have covered animals that have this kind of name before, and the key is that dorsa part. There are animals with a dorsal fin, for example. This is simply used to describe something to do with the back of the animal. And put together, Erethizon dorsatum can be loosely translated as the animal with the irritating back. I do not think that this needs any more explanation. But of course, we are still going to be getting into why they are the animals with the irritating backs. All porcupines have short and stocky legs, with tails that range from long to short, and some even having a prehensile quality. It is describing a quality of a limb, which is the quality of being able to grasp 
We have covered primate species with prehensile tails, for example, and there are some porcupines who share that quality. And while we are here in a Canadian forest, it is worth mentioning that these slow-moving rodents are found in every continent in the world except for Antarctica. Though somewhere deep, deep in my heart, there is a desire that there is some Antarctican porcupine lurking around that we haven't found yet. And scientists have a grouping system or a classification system that places all porcupines in one of two groups. They will either fall into the Old World category or the New World category. We see this also in primate species, where you have Old World monkeys and New World monkeys. The Old World porcupines will be those that are found in Africa, Europe, and Asia, and the New World ones being those found in North, Central, and South America. The North American porcupine that we are looking at today is the only species that is found in the United States and in Canada. The largest porcupine in the world is the North African Crested Porcupine. It grows up to 36 inches, about 90 centimeters long. This is in a very stark contrast to the Bahia Hairy Dwarf Porcupine, which, living up to its name, will only grow up to about 15 inches, that's around 38 centimeters long. And depending on the species, porcupines can weigh as little as two and a half pounds, all the way up to 77 pounds. Those are some really stark differences. For those of you that love kilograms, don't worry, you don't have to do the conversion in your head or on a calculator. That is 1.2 to 35 kilograms. That is quite amazing. There will also be a difference in their tail length, some growing only up to about 8 inches long, and some growing up to 12 inches long, that's about 20 to 30 centimeters. There is also a difference in the quills that they have. New World porcupines, which include the friend we are covering today, have small quills that are around 4 inches or 10 centimeters long. Compare that to the other species that are in the Old World group that have quills that can grow up to 20 inches, around 51 centimeters long. That means that the quills of the Old World porcupines are on average five times longer than the New World ones. But note that there are a few exceptions, as is almost always the case. And while we are in a forest today, they occupy a great variety of habitats. We are talking deserts, grasslands, mountains, rainforests, and forests. They will make their dens in tree branches, roots, rock crevices, brushes, logs, and more. This animal has some serious range, or at least it is very tolerant of its environment in which it lives, in the sense that it can adapt quite well. Intuitively, the quills of the porcupine are used as a defense. You can imagine that if you were trying to eat, let's say, a marshmallow, imagine that you wanted to bite a marshmallow, and so you opened your mouth and prepared to chomp down on that goodness, but just as you were about to eat the marshmallow, an array of sharp barbs are ready to meet you there. Chances are you're just going to leave that marshmallow alone and simply eat something else. Their quills are a sharp and effective deterrent. There is a little bit of a myth that porcupines can shoot their quills out, and while that would be a very cool power to have, no porcupine has that ability. They are able to detach quills at will, and they can even use those quills as an auditory deterrent as well as a physical one. They can shake them wildly, making them rattle, similar to a rattlesnake who lets off an auditory signal as to their capacity to commit harm, as is also the case for the porcupine. If they do need to, they will charge, but they will charge backwards against their predators, as that is where the quills are. These sharp little quills are very loosely attached, making it easy for them to stick into the predator. And some of these quills are equipped with scales or barbs that makes them tremendously difficult to remove. 
and also, it goes without saying, very painful to try to remove. If a porcupine was to theoretically dispense with all of their quills, it is not like they will be quillless forever. They will grow back over time, and one single porcupine at any time can have 30,000 or more quills, according to National Geographic. But remember that these quills are used for defense. They are herbivorous, they are just looking to munch on some leaves. They will only really use these quills when they have to, when they feel threatened, or when a predator comes up near them. But nonetheless, these quills are wildly effective as a deterrent and are a huge part of the porcupine's life. Being herbivores, porcupines generally eat vegetation. That includes things like barks and stems and even wood, among other things like nuts, tubers, grass, leaves, fruits, seeds, and buds. They are not meat eaters, but porcupines engage in an activity of chewing bones. They do this for a similar reason for why the guinea pig chews as they do. In the case of the guinea pig, it grinds down their teeth to a comfortable size, but in the case of the porcupine, they use it to sharpen their teeth. They also extract important minerals from bones, things like calcium and salt, in order to keep them healthy. Noting one exception, porcupines will sometimes eat small lizards and bugs, though this is a rarer phenomenon than the rest of their diet. These animals are both extraordinarily gentle and extraordinarily solitary. They love their alone time and will only really get together when it comes to reproduction. They are nocturnal like many other rodents, meaning they do the majority of their tasks and are awake mostly during the night time. Remember that the opposite of nocturnal, the creatures that are awake mostly during the daytime, are called diurnal. And a little fact about when porcupines do come together, they are referred to as prickles. That might be, to date, my favorite group name of any animal. Now here in this Canadian forest, this Canadian porcupine loves to climb. They climb trees that are often a little bit easier to climb in order to get bud leaves that are appearing on the edges of branches. They will also sometimes stop and rest on the treetops during the daytime in which they are not foraging around. You will not find this kind of behavior in old world porcupines. It seems to be more a new world porcupine phenomena. This is an extremely interesting behavior given that they are not really all that good at it. If you look at a porcupine, climbing doesn't look like its forte, or rather like its strong suit. This habit is considered to be unhealthy because their propensity to falling is not exactly a slim chance. They fall pretty often and can even fracture different parts of their body from these falls. One aspect about the quills of the porcupine is as natural as it is unintuitive. Their quills possess natural antibiotics. If somehow they are poked with their own quills, which can happen, these natural antibiotics ensure that it prevents any infection. Porcupines are safe from their own quills, which is really cool. The quills are coated with fatty acids that give them a greasy feel. And when these fatty acids were isolated from the quills and put into an environment with bacterial strains, amazingly, the fatty acids found on their quills greatly or strongly inhibited the growth of six different bacterial strains. And a researcher named Rose suggests that porcupines specifically benefit from antibiotic properties because they frequently quill themselves. And so if you were wondering if it was possible for a porcupine to quill themselves, yes, but they got it covered. Isn't that just so cool? The porcupine has a less than astute eyesight. But remember that these creatures are mostly nocturnal. In the darkness of the night, oftentimes hearing is going to play a little bit more of a role for them. And that is exactly what you see in their anatomy. They have very well-developed ears and astute hearing, allowing them to navigate their environment in a very sophisticated, auditory way. Common predators for them include things like hawks and snakes and leopards. 
These are all animals that love to hunt in utter silence. They make as little noise as possible until they are close enough to strike and with lethal force. And so having that astute hearing that is able to pick up on very minute details in an auditory sense is going to give them a tremendous advantage when it comes to their survival. When porcupines have little porcupine babies of their own, they will give birth to one to three babies at a time, or maybe I should say one to three porcupets at a time. The porcupine has a fantastic group name and a fantastic baby name. The porcupets are so small, about 3% of their mother's weight at birth. But after they are born, in a few days, their quills can harden to be just as sharp as the rest of them. Porcupets will mature to nine months to two and a half years, depending on the species, and they can live on average up to 15 years in the wild. The porcupets are seriously cool. Now let us move on to the name of the creature. What does it mean and where does it come from? And then we are going to go into the dad joke of the episode, and I am so excited for that. The word porcupine is used to connote a rodent noted for its stout, clumsy body and its defensive spines or quills that cover the body and tail. This word was first used this way in around 1400 and is closely linked to French and then to Latin. In the French, which I am not going to pronounce with a French accent but just read it very anglicized, pork epic which is translated literally as spine hog, and this is coming from the Latin word porcus, which means hog. Now, porcus is combined with spina, which means thorn or spine, so combining those porcus spina, porcupine, that is where it comes from. That is so cool. And now let us move on to the dad joke. I have been waiting all week for this. This was written mostly by a user named Tyler Berger 206 A man in a movie theater notices a porcupine sitting next to him. Are you a porcupine? The man asked, surprised. Yeah, the prickly creature responded. Well, what in the world are you doing at the movies? The porcupine said, well, I liked the book. I think Tyler knocked it out of the park on this one. That is a great joke. And now let us move on to the review of the episode. This review is coming from RKH Wu, who is writing all the way, well, today, not all the way, from Canada. We are in a Canadian forest right now. RKH writes, Stefan's voice is perfect to wind down while learning interesting facts about a wide variety of animals. Thank you, RKH, for that wonderful review, just like the last episode in which one of you wrote a very pithy, short, and sweet review, RKH followed suit with a similar style. Thank you, RKH, for the very kind words, and I'm so glad that you were a part of the show. If the show has helped you in any way, leaving a review is one of the best ways that you can help give back to the show and help make it better for everyone else. By taking a couple of minutes, you can help the show get better, you can help it grow and bring many more friends to this podcast, and as far as I'm concerned, the more, the merrier. I think that it is an interesting thought that you listening right now and journeying with me are not only journeying with me. If you are in Australia, you are journeying with someone in Germany. If you are in Dublin, you are journeying with someone who is living in Chicago. Our animal podcast family knows no borders, no bounds, and that is really cool. To request an animal, you can do so by going to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and clicking on the Submit and Animal Request tab. And I forgot to mention at the top of the show that if you want to submit your artwork, you can now do that. There is a dedicated place on the website where all of you can submit your stuff and look at each other's and see what all of you guys are drawing together. If you wish to reach out to me, Steph Wolf, for any other reason, you can do so by sending either an email to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com or you can send a message to relaxwithanimalfacts on Instagram. 
to get more of this show, including four extra episodes. If you would like more Relax with Animal Facts for only $1 a month, which includes four extra episodes, voting, and much more, you can go to patreon.com slash relax with animal facts. You can sign up for a free trial. We are going to be doing a giveaway soon for the newest t-shirt, and that link is in the description. A huge thank you to George Vlad for the ambiances that were used in this episode. It is because of his work that we can journey to some of the most remote places on Earth. His YouTube and his website are linked down below. The resources used in today's episode come from LiveScience.com, a to zanimals.com, nationalzoo.si.edu, Britannica.com, etimonline.com, and jokesforus.com. Those are also in the show notes or the description, and I encourage you to go check them out. What an amazing creature we have covered today. This spiny little animal, filled with antibiotic quills, is a fan favorite, and I think for a reason. I am frankly surprised it has taken us over 150 episodes to cover this creature. I think that just goes to show how many amazing friends we have in the animal kingdom. I hope you have enjoyed our journey together, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one with the next animal. Take care.